the temptations. And uh, when the guitar spot opened up for them, he called me. Hey there, this is Chad Garber, and um, in this video, I am actually interviewing the legendary Melvin uh -huh. Jordan. And so we're going to, you know, the whole point of this YouTube channel that I have is called Improve Your Guitar Skills and Sound. And so I'm going to interview people to give them their feedback on how to do that. How do they how do they improve their guitar skills and how do they improve their guitar sound? And so Melvin Jordan, I'm going to let you give your background real quick. Um, and so this is Melvin Jordan. And okay. uh, so what's your background? Uh, well, I'm, I'm uh, originally from uh, Detroit, Michigan. I live here in Atlanta, Georgia now. Uh, so I grew up um, just um, listening to Motown music day in and day out. So that's what I did. And I actually uh, started playing guitar when I was probably 13, which was actually considered late, uh, given that most guitar players start six, seven, eight, nine years old. Mm. But uh, before then, I was trying to play basketball. Then I realized I wasn't going to grow any taller. So, <laughs> 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 but I, I just love the game. So anyway, the book hit me to play guitar when I was 13. Uh, my best friend had a guitar. Uh, his, and then his uncle was teaching him how to play it. So, I, you know, he, he started showing me some things and we would sit on the porch during the summer with his uncle. Um, and he would, he would teach us songs. So that's where I started, 13 years old. Wow. And so what did your, what, where did you go from there? Like, did you, did it go into your career or how, how did everything go with your future? Well, I, um, I played for about a year maybe two years. And my father, was, he said, I want to see if you're serious. So, and then, then I started taking a lesson down at the university, Wayne State University. Uh, there was they had student teachers down there. And, and back then in the 70s, lessons were like $3 and a half an hour, mm. which is nothing like what I charge nowadays. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I started taking lessons just to start reading because before then I was just learning by ear. I would put, you know, put a, put a record on and just put it back, put it back just developing my ears to, to play everything that I heard. Uh, so, and that's always been my best asset. And it still is. I can read. My ears are still my best asset. Mm. So that's, that's how I got started. Then, then from there. Um, hold on one second. Hold on one second. Okay, one second. Dog, my dog was like whining, so now he's going yeah. to hear him lisp. Okay, okay, so go on. Okay. Yeah. I mean, from from there, um, I, I immediately was was playing with my best friend, and then we added a drummer, we added a bass player, and we basically had a your your classic rock band. Mm. We had two guitars, bass, and drums. And uh, growing up in Detroit, we were playing classic rock as opposed to Motown. Wow! I didn't really get into playing music from my city until I got to be in, what, 18, 19 years old? Before then, just playing classic rock. That's funny. Uh, That's interesting. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. So we were doing Edgar and Johnny Winter stuff, Grand Funk Railroad, of course, Jimi Hendrix and uh, um, Buddy Miles. So nice. we were doing all the classic rock groups. And uh, then, guys, of course, you got and pretty big. Ernie you got... Isley came out with the Isley Brothers. Then, uh... of course, we started trying to imitate them. So, and from then, uh, I could say I was just playing in bands. I didn't play with a piano player until I was probably 21, 22. Mm. So as, that's why I always play rhythm guitar. I love rhythm guitar. And then, then I start my hand, start, start trying to solo. Try. But so I always just play rhythm. Yeah. And then I, then I start trying to figure out solos. And it went pretty well. I, I'm, I'm taking it. Yeah, it, it, it went okay. <laughs> uh, you know, you always, you know, even today, you always uh, <clears throat> find that there's room for improvement. Yeah. Uh, even, you know, I think I'm working on uh, nowadays just trying to move across the board pretty fluent with, fl fluently without thinking about it, without mm -hmm. thinking about patterns, because mm -hmm. that's a lot of what most guitar players do. You got patterns that you work on. You know, that's, that's interesting that you mentioned that because... I remember you you played at one of the one of the things we were having the other day at, not the other day but a little while ago at church and you played the Purple Rain guitar solo 
And right. what, what just stood out was it looked like the guitar was a part of your body. It was like an extension of you. And yeah. it was it was amazing to watch. And I think you had, you know, that's when you were not thinking about scales. You were just, you were in right. it. Yeah, I was super impressed with that. I had I had a teacher um, uh, when I went to school. He he said he said you have a good knack for soloing. He said, but you want to think in phrases. Mm. He said, so think like a singer. And he had me starting to sing what I would play. And in the beginning, it was so hard because I wasn't used to that. I was like anybody else. I like I know the scale that'll work here. I know this pattern will work here. But it started me to think about phrasing. Mm, that's really like hard. having a conversation, like you and I having a conversation. I say something, you say something. And giving and giving the music room to breathe. Instead of just trying to show I got all these chops and I'm just going to blaze through all this stuff. And he said, that's just like people talking nonstop without taking a breath. Wow, that's awesome. That's I'm, 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 I'm playing with guitar. I've been playing for about a year. He said, that's what it sounds like. Wow. Because it's just phrase. And let it breathe. See, I'm you guilty. Know, I'm he definitely started me thinking about singers, which I've my my whole career I played behind singers, so that was pretty easy to think about. Mm. But it was just hard to start off and try to implement that. Yeah, you that's know? some really good advice though, because that's you know I'm I'm doing that recently. You know, I used to be able to just play a bunch of notes and feel good about it, <laughs> but then I got older. Yeah. It's like I don't feel good about it anymore. It's like I don't. I know it doesn't. It doesn't work with me. It's like it bugs me so i gotta do i gotta start doing phrases and not just blah, 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 you know because it you know like you said it's just babbling it's yeah. so, so that's really good advice so so then what what happened in your career after that you you were in the bands and stuff like that and play with the piano well, player i played i played um guitar pretty much in uh, several bands in detroit and and um uh i felt like uh at that time um well i let me back up when I got in my early 20s, the uh, Funk Brothers were still around town. Those were the Motown session guys. Mm. And they allowed me to play with them. They were serious jazz guys. And me and the drummer were probably the, the, what they call the young bucks of the band. So they allowed us to play. And I remember the first time I went to play with them. Of course, they got books because they're great readers. At that time, my, my reading, quite frankly, stunk. Like my and, uh, <clears throat> I, I knew chords and all that, but to look at a chord change, I, like you might say, an E minus seven flat five. Looking at it, I didn't know how, what to play. Now, mind you, I've been playing that chord for years. But just to look at it, I didn't know that this is what I'm supposed to play. Right. So um, my first job with them, I really stunk to me. And I went to the band leader and I asked him to... Uh, could I take his, you know, the book home so I could work on these songs? And he looked at me, he said, now, young buck, I usually don't let my book out of my sight. He said, but I'm going to trust you. So I took that book home and I did what they call it. And he told me, he said, you go home and get in the shed. That's what they told me. That means you go home and practice. Mm. So I did. I took it home and I opened it up and I was practicing like, I was practicing day and night on that book. Mm-hmm. which really improved my reading, uh, just even with just uh, chord charts. We ain't talking about just single line reading, but improved my reading with chord charts. And once I figured out those chords, I was like, okay, I, I've been playing this chord all along. I just didn't know what to call it. Mm-hmm. You know, and then, so that helped me to figure out the names of the things that I was already playing. Because I already had a good ear and I was figuring out chords listening to records. So I was playing all the chords that were on the sheet, but just didn't know what to call them. Mm-hmm. You know, so you might say a minor seven and a minor six. And those are basically built on the same chord, you know, just with a different root. You know, so I start figuring out like stuff like that. Mm. Oh, a minor seven and a major or a major six chord. I could voice I could voice something similar and it would be the same thing. Mm. So I was figuring stuff out like that. And from there, um, those guys, I was in basically in school. You know, because we would play, and on our breaks, they would tell stories uh, about the old Motown days and those, you know, the, the Motown review of two words. And I would basically, I would honestly just sit at their feet and just listen and look up at them. Uh, I was just honored to be around them. So I learned a lot. 
Um, one, one thing that really, I guess, propelled me to be an aggressive guitar player was um, they had a piano player named Earl Van Dyke. He's on a lot of the Motown recordings. And I was standing next to him and I was playing real timid because somebody in the audience had re requested some obscure Marvin Gaye song. And I'm a Marvin Gaye fan, but I didn't know this song. And these guys played it in the studio. They actually played the song. So I turned down trying to learn it. And I was looking at his hands and listening. And he turned around and yelled at me. He said, play it and put it down. So I just turned up and I just started playing. But uh, <laughs> and I didn't take I didn't take it personal. I knew I knew exactly what he wanted me to do. He wanted me to be uh, aggressive and not be timid with my playing. My eyes water a lot, so no, that's all right. <clears throat> yeah, uh, he wanted me to stay aggressive at all costs. Like you say, when when you're doing something, you do it. If you're gonna do it, do it loud and wrong. <laughs> yeah. If you're gonna be wrong, do it loud. <laughs> Uh, but not not to be timid at it. But and I and I I took that to heart, and I've never done that again. Mm. You know, I mean, he literally yelled at me That's on stage. Funny. Wow! Like, but I, I I took the message. Like I said, I didn't take it personal. Some people say, "Oh, I I don't want to talk to him no more." I said, "No, I, oh, yeah, I just what he wanted me to do." It's better than them yelling at you to play lower. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah you know, he, he wanted me to stay aggressive and, and play. Okay. You know, awesome. that's where they came from. They, everybody that they were around, you, you play or you go sit down. Mm. <laughs> so I was like, no, I'm not sitting down. I'm, I'm learning lessons from these guys. That's awesome. And plus, too, around town, they did um, Saturday morning um, lessons. They gave back to the music community. So they would teach lessons on Saturday morning, what we call the Metro Arts Building. Hmm. We had a metro, place called the Metro Arts Building in Detroit. And all those guys would be down there teaching because they didn't want generate. They didn't want to lose generations of musicians, which I feel like we did lose because mm. everything went electronic. That's a whole another story. A whole another story. It's <laughs> yeah. another story. And uh, so, where did that lead you? Well, from there, I um, I ended up going to school um, late. I turned twenty seven. I felt like it was something missing, and my desire was to go to Berkeley College of Music because I know that's where Quincy Jones went. Mm. And so when I turned 27, honestly, I packed up my car and I drove to Boston. Mm. Mind you, I don't recommend anybody do this. I uh, didn't have anywhere to live. I wasn't enrolled in school. But in my mind, I'm going I'm to figure it out. Mm. And when I got there, I said, I don't recommend people do that. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I was willing to live in my car until I figured it out. Wow. But everything, you know, thank God, everything worked out. I mean, I got there and they allowed me to stay in the dorms. Um, I got in school mm. and uh, got financial aid because I didn't have any of that worked out. Wow. All I knew was I wanted to go. And I packed up and drove 15 hours. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. And from that, I, um, I, moved back, I moved back home after I graduated. And I, played, I did gospel plays for about, about two years. I did, you know, gospel plays about two years. I played, I played in a show called the biggest one I did was called The First Lady, and that featured Vicky Winans and Clifton Davis. Hmm. And from then, I did that for about, like I say, I played in that play for about two years. And then I, uh, I remember coming home, and one of my best friends I had, I used to play in a band with in a, uh, a place in, called Snickers in Detroit. It was a supper club. We had a weekly gig with a one of uh, Aretha Franklin's background singer's name, Sandra Fever. And um, he and I were inseparable. Anyway, he got the job with uh, The Temptations. And um, when the guitar spot opened up for them, he called me. And I had just come back home off the road with his play. And uh, he called me and I, uh, he said, I'm in Denver right now and I'll be in town Wednesday. And um, he said, if you come by, we'll go over the show. Basically, I knew their songs because I grew up listening to them. I just needed to know their arrangements and how to segue from tune to tune. Mm. So we spent an hour over his mom's house uh, just going over 
um, their arrangements, how to get from song to song, because I knew the songs. Wow. Uh, and then that was on a Wednesday. On Thursday, I was in New Atlantic City, New Jersey, uh, playing the f first show with them. With the Temptations. Temptations, yeah. Um, and actually, I didn't meet the singers after the show. <laughs> Played the whole show and never met them. <laughs> after the show, he said, man, let me take you backstage and meet these guys. <laughs> <laughs> so it was fantastic, though. That was one of the, that was a highlight of my career because Growing up in Detroit, that's what I that's what I dreamed about, just playing with a Motown group. And then I got to play with one of my favorite groups of all time. The I mean, I knew all of their stuff. Wow. You know, How long I did mean, you play I, with them? I love Stevie Wonder. I love the Jackson Five. Or, you know, I love them. I love Marvin Gaye, you know, Marvin Les, Mary Wells. I loved all of them. But the Temptations were one of my favorite groups. Smokey Robinson, I loved them to death. But Temptations were one of my all-time favorite groups. And I got a chance to spend time with them. What an inspiring story. How long did you play with them? I played with them seven and a half years. Wow. Uh, and then, and, and I, you know what, at the same time, I realized that um, I'm not 18 anymore. And that I don't want to be waking up in a different city every night. And not, I actually, it got to the point, honestly, Chad, that and I can tell you, I was in Ohio, but at the time I didn't know. I woke up one day in a hotel. I didn't know what day it was or where I was at because mm -hmm. we traveled that much. And I thought, well, you know what? It's about time for me to get this up. I mean, I, I remember picking up my itinerary. It didn't help me because I didn't remember what day it was. Mm -hmm. But we traveled a lot. And in the beginning, it was for five years, it was awesome. Then two years after that, uh, two more years, I did two and a half more years. Just thinking about, you know, I think I'm gonna give it up mm. because uh, basically, just just for musicians who like to tour or who aspire to tour, uh, you only make money when you're working. When you're at home, you're not making money. Yeah, so wow. that's that's the thing about touring. You only make money when you're out working. Now, fortunate that I made enough to sustain me. That's all I did. Mm. So when I came home, it wasn't like I was looking for a job. Yeah. Um, that was my job. And it, it paid me enough where actually I bought a condo, which I still own, uh, just for working that job. Wow. You know, so what an inspiring I think story. you really have to take care of the money that you make because mm -hmm. once you stop, it stops. The money stops. Uh, for this music business, this is a side note. You got you to gotta write songs in order to get what you call that mailbox money, which is royalties. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a passive income. You got to write a song, which I actually did. We wrote two songs that ended up uh, on two of their CDs. Wow. Um, and you're getting royalties from them? Yeah, I did. That's nice. It really trickled off now because they don't play them songs that more <laughs> anymore. Yeah, but I did. I wrote two songs. Yeah, that's Man, so cool. We were writing partners. We, you know, so that afforded me, just being on the road in the hotel, it did afford me to uh, learn how to track you know, because I didn't know anything about recording. Mm. So the drummer and I, we, we bought these little QI, I think at the time, QI 300s from Yamaha. Mm. And uh, Tape player we things? Did, huh? Was yeah, tape we just got, four, four, we got four it. Was, you know, he, the, he was in my, my, my hotel room, I was in his, and we were just learning it together. And from trying to learn these machines, we started writing songs. And mm. then we, we figured out we're pretty good at writing these songs. And we presented a couple of to them and they accepted them. Mm, that's awesome. So, you know, so we, 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 that, that, I say just time away like that afforded me some time to really learn how to start recording. Mm, that's awesome. So I know your time is short and thank yeah. you for sharing all that, but just what's one thing you would share with people who are currently trying to improve their guitar skills and their guitar sound? You, a lot of the, you've already shared some of this stuff. You gave a lot of great tips as you went along, but what's the one thing you would leave with us? Uh, for improving your sound. Or your skills uh, or sound, both of them. I think a lot of your sound is, is going to come, a lot of people think it's going to come from effects or your amplifier. A lot of your sound is coming from your fingers. Hmm. You know, it's, it's, uh, that's why I figured out a lot of it is coming from your fingers. I didn't start using effects for years because I wanted to make sure that what I was playing was coming through and I wasn't masking 
what I was doing. Mm. Uh, I use effects now, but I, I think a lot of it still comes from my fingers. Mm. So, it's, you know, because there are so, so many electronic devices out. And I, I know some people play well without them and some people play well with them. But I still think your sound really comes from your fingers mm. and your, your attack and your approach to that. Oh, that's awesome. That's good advice. And then the skills. I mean, how often like, do you practice every day or do you recommend practicing every day? or what, what would your... I, You know what I did? When I first started playing, and people don't understand that, when I first started playing, I, I practiced four hours a day. Four hours every day? You wouldn't four miss. hours every day. Wow. And it wasn't four hours straight. Mind you, I'm 13 years old. So I would practice an hour, go outside, play basketball, come back here and practice another hour, go out and, because I live across the street from a park. Mm. So I would go out and play baseball with my friends, come back in, practice an hour, maybe go bike riding with my friends. So I was in and out the house, but I averaged four hours a day. Wow. Every day. Mm. Did not miss. Because I that, that ended up being my passion. I, I think that's what, uh, with anything you do that you love, it's got to be a passion behind it. Man, that's so uh, true. It wasn't like my mom or dad said, you need to go practice today. No. Dad's telling me to stop. Because <laughs> I practice all the time, yeah. You know, because I was trying to learn my craft, and and honestly, I didn't I didn't want to work a dead end job. I said, this is going to be my job. That's awesome. I can relate and, to that. And, and and God blessed me to do that. Yeah. That's you know awesome. that I I mean I make a living with my fingers. So do you, you still know? practice every day? No, I still don't practice every. No, not anymore. Oh, really? Life sets in when you get married and you have family. So, and you got a job. So, yeah. uh, I'm still doing music. I'm a music teacher now. I'm teaching elementary school. Oh, yeah. But I'm doing my passion. I, you know, I got elementary school band. I'm not using tracks. I got second grade drummer. I got, you know, uh, fourth, third, and fourth grade guitar player and bass players, you know. So, I got piano players. So, I'm, I'm still teaching the craft with instruments. Yeah. You're still your passion, is your, your, music. yeah. Oh, it's still my passion. Yes, absolutely. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for taking the time, Elvin. I know you got lots to do, but um, I appreciate that. And uh, that's awesome. You're very inspiring. You've always been inspiring, inspiring to me, and I've always looked up to you. And so thank you for teaching the things you've taught me. Thank you. You're welcome. Sorry about that. Right in time, right? Somebody's calling yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Chevy. You forced me to dig up some stuff I ain't thought about in a while. Oh, that's awesome. I know. It's gold. It's total gold. And so thanks, yeah. Melvin. And uh, we will talk to you soon. Okay, bye. Bye.